A little boy ends up crashing into a luxury car with his bike when he gets distracted. And when a man gets out of the car, the boy is scared to death. But everyone is shocked with what he does next. It was an ordinary day and the sun shone with an intensity that promised new beginnings, shedding its light on the simple streets of a seaside town. May watched her son, Gabe, with a look that mixed excitement and love, firmly holding what would be more than a gift, a symbol of dreams and hope. Today is a special day, honey. It's your 12th birthday, she said, her voice laced with emotion. You can open your eyes now and take a look at your present. In front of him, there was a bike. Although it was used with its tires worn and a few wear marks, it still worked and was ready for new adventures. I know it's not new, but... Gabe interrupted his mother with a tight hug, his eyes shining brighter than the sun outside. Oh my God, Mom, it's perfect. It's the best present in the world. The clear joy in his voice and the sincerity in his young eyes touched the woman's heart, who was struggling to hold back the tears. The little boy had dreamed of this moment for so long, imagining himself riding on the streets, and now his dream was coming true. Promise me that you will be careful, son, and that you will always wear your helmet, said May, as she helped her son adjust his somewhat worn helmet on his head. I promise, Mom. Oh, I can't wait to ride it, he replied, his excitement clear. And so, with an excited farewell and a heart full of expectations, Gabe got on his bike and set off down the street. May stood in the doorway, watching him ride away, with a mixture of pride and worry in her heart. May the Lord protect him, she whispered, like a silent prayer for her son to always come home safely. The little boy rode through the streets of the city with an enthusiasm that only the innocence of childhood can know. Each pedal stroke took him further away from his modest reality, allowing him to explore worlds that only existed in his imagination. The bicycle, despite its marks of use, would now be his faithful companion, taking him along unknown paths under the sun that seemed to bless his journey. He rode through parks, busy streets, and quiet alleyways, feeling like the king of the world on two wheels. The freedom he felt was indescribable, an escape from the daily hardships that, despite his young age, weighed so heavily on his shoulders. Oh, this is amazing! He shouted, to no one in particular, but his laughter echoed through the streets. The days that followed were full of adventures. The little boy woke up eager to ride every morning, with his bike always by his side, ready for the next adventure. May, for her part, found comfort in her son's happiness, like a light shining through the shadows of her daily struggles. And so, the days that passed were wonderful. The little boy was on school vacation, so he loved going for rides with his friends. The days unfolded under the warm sun, each one bringing new adventures for Gabe and his new bike. The simple joy of cycling through the city streets, accompanied by the laughter and joyful conversations with his friends, filled Gabe's days with a pure, almost tangible happiness. The little boy, with a light heart and a mind free of worries, felt part of something bigger, a community of young and adventurous spirits like himself, but something was about to change his destiny, something he never imagined would happen. One particularly radiant afternoon, as the sun kissed the sea, creating golden reflections on the waves, the boy let himself be carried away by the beauty of the moment. The fresh breeze caressed his face, and he closed his eyes for a moment, only to feel more intensely the freedom that the bike gave him. However, this brief moment of carelessness had unexpected consequences. Opening his eyes, Gabe realized too late that he was rapidly approaching a car that had parked in the street. He tried to swerve, but the collision was inevitable. With a bang, his bike crashed into the back of a shiny Porsche, throwing him violently to the ground. The impact was brutal, not only for the bike, which now was just a bunch of twisted metal, but also for the luxury car, the back of which sported a deep dent and a shattered headlight. The boy, thrown a few meters away, felt the asphalt tear his skin, the scratches on his arms and legs burning with the pain of the sudden contact. Fortunately, he had his helmet on, and this prevented him from injuring himself more seriously. However, the physical pain seemed insignificant compared to the terror that gripped him as he contemplated the scene before him. His bicycle, the gift that symbolized his mother's love and sacrifice, was now destroyed, and the Porsche, 
a luxury object that he could never dream of compensating for, was damaged and was all his fault. The owner of the Porsche, a man with an elegant posture and impeccable clothes, got out of the car with an expression that Gabe couldn't decipher. Fear gripped the boy. Terrified of the possible consequences that his mother, with her already limited resources, would have to face because of his mistake. Please, sir, it was an accident. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. He could barely stammer through his sobs, his heart clenched with guilt and despair. The precariousness of his situation, his mother's daily struggle to maintain the household with the minimum necessary to live, all this came to light in that moment of vulnerability. He looked at his hands, now bruised, and at the damaged Porsche, feeling a crushing weight on his young shoulders. The broken bike wasn't just a lost object, it was a shattered dream, a reminder of the difficulties his family had faced and which now seemed insurmountable. In this moment of desolation, Gabe feared for the future, for the consequences of a simple moment of carelessness that could irrevocably alter the delicate balance of his life with his mother. After the accident, the owner of the Porsche, whose imposing posture revealed him to be a very wealthy man, got out of the car with his eyes shining with tears, as if he had been frightened by the crash, and immediately ran to help the hurt boy. Kid, kid, are you okay? Are you hurt? He said, worried. The little boy responded that he was fine, but after the millionaire saw the scratches and bruises, he insisted that he needed to resolve the situation directly at his house. I need to talk to your mom, kid. The man didn't even wait and immediately picked up the broken bicycle and placed it carefully in the trunk of the car. Then he invited Gabe into the vehicle. The little boy was panicking and begged the man to forgive him. The journey to his house was filled with a tense silence at first, interrupted only by the boy's trembling voice, which, between sobs, revealed the precarious situation in which they lived. Sir, I... I promise I'll find a way to pay for your car myself. My mother, she can't pay for it. She's very sick. And she only gets a government pension because she can't work with her injured knee. The boy said, hoping that the rich man would be moved by his situation. But the owner of the Porsche just said, Right. I know it doesn't look like much, but my mother saved every penny to buy me this bike. He continued, casting an occasional glance back at the trunk with the memory of the gift making his loss even more painful. The man listened in silence, his eyes alternating between the road ahead and the boy beside him. With each new revelation, a shadow of emotion passed across his face, a mixture of surprise and something deeper. However, Gabe was so consumed by his fear and despair that he barely noticed the subtle changes in the man's expression. I... I can do anything. Any job. I can work for you if you like. I just... I just don't want my mother to worry. Please, he insisted, his voice laced with the determination to protect his mother at all costs, even if it meant taking on responsibilities far beyond his young age. The man just told him to relax and that everything would work out. I just need to talk to your mother, calm down. And then remained silent, just looking at the boy from time to time. It was as if the boy's every word was being engraved on his heart. Every detail of Gabe's story and his mother drawing a picture he hadn't expected to find that day. Gabe, we're going to sort this out together, okay? Don't worry. He said, his voice low and reassuring, but laden with an unspoken promise. When they arrived at his house, the boy's heart was pounding so hard that he could barely stand. Not only did he dread the moment when his mother saw his bicycle destroyed, but also when she saw the stranger bringing news that could shatter the fragile balance of their lives. With a heavy heart and downcast eyes, crossed the threshold of her house, his soul burdened with an inevitable confession. His arrival, marked by a visible hesitation, cut through the silence of the modest home. Mom! He began, his voice full of fear and remorse. I... I ruined the bike. The words, although simple, carried the weight of the world for young Gabe. His mother ran to him, worried by the visible injuries. Oh my god, son, what happened? Are you all right, honey? Her caring voice was a mixture of panic and worry. Terrified, she ran to the bathroom to find the first aid kit. The boy tried to explain himself, but the mother, already crying at the sight of her little boy all bruised up, didn't even hear him. Until he shouted, Mom, stop, there's someone here with me, the boy managed to say, 
interrupting her immediate concern for his injuries to reveal the presence of the luxury car's owner. May felt her heart tighten at the news. Before she could fully digest her son's confession, the sound of the door opening and footsteps entering caught her attention, snapping her out of her thoughts. Moved by worry and fear of the unknown consequences, she hurried to the entrance, preparing to face whatever was on the other side. The poor thing was already ready to beg for mercy, knowing that she couldn't afford a Porsche, when past and present collided with a force that left her breathless. Hugh? She said as she looked at the man, with surprise in her voice that was almost palpable. The millionaire in front of him replied with a smile that bridged years of separation and unforgotten memories. Mate, hi. The joy and nervousness mixed in his voice as they both found themselves caught up in memories of a simpler and happier time. Gabe stood watching, unable to understand the connection between his mother and the stranger who, until that moment, had only been the owner of the damaged Porsche. Perplexity was evident on his face as Hugh broke the silence with a question directed at the woman, but whose answer would change the little boy's life forever. Is he? The rich man's words floated in the air, loaded with meaning. The mother, overcome by emotion and already with tears in her eyes, confirmed the truth with a nod. Yeah, he is. The revelation, although made in a whisper, resounded like thunder, marking the beginning of a new chapter for all of them. Gabe was still watching the scene unfold with confusion that quickly gave way to surprise. Do you know him, Mom? He asked, as he tried to process the information that the unexpected visitor was more than a stranger and it was as if a whirlwind of emotions swept over him as he half expected the answer. And that's when Hugh asked to explain everything. The three of them sat down on the sofa. May was in tears, could barely speak. It turned out that the man who was the definition of success with his luxurious life and professional achievements, had an emptiness in his heart, like a missing piece in his perfect existence. Years before, Hugh met May, a young waitress at a lavish party where he, the son of a tycoon, fell madly in love with her simplicity and beauty. The two had a brief but intense romance, which came to an abrupt halt when his father sent him to study at a college abroad. He didn't want to go, but his father forced him, and Hugh left, leaving behind May along with his heart. But what he didn't know was that the young woman was pregnant. Then, the young man graduated and, even after his father's death, when he took over all the companies and everything, he wanted to find May again. And so, 12 years went by and May never left his heart. Rich and successful, Hugh decided to look for her, finding out that she had a son Gabe who could be his son too. As he wasn't sure, he began to follow him discreetly, watching him ride his bike through the streets, looking for physical similarities, signs that would confirm his suspicions. Watching Gabe from afar, the millionaire noticed the same features, the same look on his face. In a moment of emotion, tears streamed down his face as he was sure that the boy was truly his son. However, the man lost sight of Gabe when he entered the street. In his desperation to find him, he stopped the car and looked to the side at which point the little boy, coming from another direction, crashed into the Porsche, a sudden blow that took him out of his thoughts. Sitting in the small living room, May, with a trembling voice and watery eyes, revealed the truth to Gabe. He's your father, honey. The boy, his eyes wide, couldn't believe it. Hugh, his voice choked with emotion, began to tell him that he had always wanted to meet them again. I never knew about you, Gabe, but I always felt that something, or someone, was missing in my life. When I found out about you, there was nothing I wanted more than to meet you, to be in your life." He confessed, his words full of regret and love. Gabe, processing the revelation, looked at his mother and then at the man. A mixture of confusion and curiosity shone in his eyes. The dream of having a father was now coming true. They talked for hours, full of tears, laughter, and many questions. Hugh shared stories of his life, his dreams and regrets. That afternoon, a new chapter began for Hugh, May, and Gabe. A chapter of rediscovery, reconciliation, and newfound love. Fate, which had once separated them, now united them again, proving that some bonds, even broken by time and circumstances, are strong enough to be rekindled. As the days turned into weeks, 
the lives of the mother and the little boy began to change. The process of reconnecting and rebuilding their lives together was gradual, but deeply meaningful. Hugh, driven by a burning desire to make up for lost years and missed opportunities, took the initiative to pay for the knee surgery that May needed. While May was recovering from surgery, a new dynamic began to emerge between Gabe and him. The boy, initially hesitant, began to open his heart to the father he had always longed to meet. Their weekends were now filled with activities together, from learning to play chess to exploring local parks and museums. With every gesture and conversation, the bond between father and son grew stronger. I wasn't a part of your past, Gabe, but I'll do anything to be in your future, exclaimed the rich man, watching his son with pride. And as time went by, finally, May and Hugh's wedding was the fulfillment of this journey of redemption and rediscovered love. The little boy, who was the one who walked his mother down the aisle, watched the scene with a broad smile, feeling complete for the first time in his life. We're a real family now. He thought with hope and happiness radiating from his being. From that day on, May, Gabe, and Hugh lived fully, facing life's ups and downs together. But the important thing was that they were together, knowing the power of love, perseverance, and family, a reminder that no matter the challenges, the end can be as sweet as the beginning. And if you liked this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.